Good day, everyone. This is Vegas Live TV's home sweet home, Las Vegas' premier lifestyle and entertainment magazine on TV, bringing to you the best of the entertainment capital of the world, right here in our Vegas Live TV studio and event center, located at the Hacienda Crossing on South Arville, Las Vegas, Nevada. Discover life in Vegas beyond the Strip and the downtown district. Vegas Life TV is your gateway to the worlds of fashion, business, lifestyle, and entertainment. Featuring diverse local events, mouth-watering cuisine from all over the world, and keeping you updated on trends in local real estate and business. For this week's highlights, have you been to Fremont Street lately? It is experiencing a renaissance and establishments are updated and polished to attract tourists and locals alike. The downtown Grand Las Vegas Hotel and Casino, formerly the Lady Luck, is the latest and most notable of the establishments to completely overhaul and boast stylish strip luxury with local tailored pricing and service. Wow, and also a truly one-of-a-kind spectacle has arrived here in Las Vegas. Director An Zhao, whose work includes the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, exclaims that the Palazzo's newest show, Panda, will leave audience in awe. Further, he says, we've taken two of China's national treasures, pandas and gongfu and illuminated them in a visually stunning production that tells an unforgettable and timeless story. Our team couldn't be happier to bring this experience to the international audience Las Vegas is known to attract. Featuring performers from the world-renowned China National Acrobatic Troupe, the China Star Dance Troupe and the Shaolin Monastery Gong Fu Monks Troupe. Do not miss this unique experience. I haven't seen that yet, but it sounds very, very good. That'll be fun. <laughs> and inquire with your favorite service or agent for limited time deals on booking at the Downtown Grand as well as show times and tickets for the stage production Panda, currently ongoing at the Palazzo. On this week's edition of Home Sweet Home, resident experts Mark and Melody offers practical insights on the real estate and business segment. And join Shannon on Lifestyles with a one-on-one -on -one with some of the local community's most influential players. Esteemed Hollywood fashion designer David Tupas presents Essence of Style, your exclusive insider access to the growing fashion industry in Las Vegas. Finally, for expert immigration counsel, watch Immigration Matter with attorney Visha Calderon dealing with the issues that matter to you. Your problems, your questions answered right here on air. She's very knowledgeable. I've heard her talk. At work, at play, at home, from the city that never sleeps. Broadcasting across the world, we are proud to showcase to our global audience that Las Vegas is home sweet home. Up next is the real estate and business segment, and you're watching Vegas Live TV's Home Sweet Home. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome to the Real Estate and Business here at Home Sweet Home, the banner program of Vegas Live TV. I'm Melody Mojica and I'm enjoying our set right here at the Studio and Event Center. And I'm Mark Bowman. The Las Vegas real estate market has seen its many ups and downs. With the recent years of increase in foreclosures and short sales, many homeowners have chosen to rent a home. Yes, and here with us today is Honorable Justice of Peace, Cynthia Cruz, for Las Vegas Justice Court Department 5 to talk about what she's seeing in her court regarding these evictions. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you for being here. Thank oh, you're very welcome. welcome. Yes. Thank you. I know the past years we've seen quite a few foreclosures and evictions and and what's happening out there right now? Are you seeing a, an increase, decrease? What's it's an increase. Uh, unfortunately, with our economy, uh, I see more and more every day that unfortunately people are coming in and they're just unable to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. And uh, property owners, property management, and landlords are being left with no choice but unfortunately to have to start doing an eviction process, um, mostly because they've got bills to pay too, and, and that's difficult. On the foreclosure side, we're seeing um, in Justice Court, we don't handle um, challenging foreclosures but what we see is when a property has been sold at foreclosure a lot of times the new owner comes in and the original owner or maybe a tenant is still living in the property and since they bought it they're trying to take over that property and so 
they actually institute an action before the Las Vegas Justice Court to be what's called a civil eviction. It's a little bit different to try to say, hey, we, we'd like to go in and be able to take back the property. So we're seeing definitely an increase there as well. Question mm -hmm. I get a lot, how long from the time the new owner takes possession until the time, I'm sorry, takes title until they could actually take possession? Uh, okay, if there is a tenant in the property or even if there's a, in a, um, a past owner, because a lot of times the new person coming in and buying the property doesn't know who's there. Right. And so um, once the um, trustee sale, which is the foreclosure sale, has happened mm -hmm. and title has been recorded, uh, a lot of times these groups will hire um, an attorney or another um, company to help start serving their notices. And what I tell everybody is, if you get a notice on your door that's talking about maybe there's somebody new and asking and it's an attorney number for you to contact, it's better, especially if you're a tenant, to call that number sooner rather than later right. because they're trying to tell you, hey, we're the new owner, you need to change who you're paying rent to because if you're a tenant and a new owner takes over and they've given you that notice and you're not paying rent to that new owner, that new owner can start a, an eviction process. Yeah. And if you get a summary eviction against you, that goes on your credit and that is that is very hard to overcome one of those evictions. Uh, I warn everybody that just because it, it may be um, not underneath a nuisance, a lot of times a lot of rental agreements have a, a lease uh, provision that says that you, you can't be um, being problematic with other um, employees and so instead of it being a nuisance it's a lease violation mm -hmm. so uh, we normally tell everybody it's the biggest pitfall it's the biggest pitfall if you're a property owner or if you um, are a leasing agent or a property management company or even a management working for a um, an apartment complex the right notices the right notices are so important. Uh, we have a website. It's a great website. Uh, it is the Civil Self Help Center uh, down at the courthouse. And they have a website. It's www.civillawselfhelp.org. Uh, I think I gave you the website yes, so you can post it. And it has all the current notices that are in force, so you're not getting an old notice. And a lot of times it can give you as to uh, both for landlords and tenants information so you're using the right notice because there's plenty of times I get people in front of me and the landlord may have an issue and they're using the wrong notice and sure. yeah. I can't grant the eviction and for sense. tenants too there's that has a lot of information tenants the biggest one that I see is that they're saying well my my apartment is is not habitable I, I have a problem and so they want to withhold the rent but they forget that there's a particular process meaning you have to tell your landlord um, or your property manager in writing what's going on and you have to give them an opportunity to fix it now before you withhold the rent and a lot of times people withhold the rent <laughs> and then tell the landlord and then it's it's a big mess and you end up with a five-day pay rent or quit on your door uh, and you don't want that. nobody's so happy many, exactly so many great information i wish we could have you for 30 minutes here but unfortunately we only have five minutes and our time is up okay <laughs> so we thank you so much for being here Bye i wish you know we hope you come back another day with us and well, talk about a different well subject. hopefully you can post the websites for both yes. the las vegas justice court and the civil self-help center they're probably the best um, resources for our court and helping people out and they're, they're a great resource and if you can't get help there, then they're usually going to give you a link to where you can. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here with Oh, us. you're very Thank welcome. Thank you so much, Judge Cruz. If you are in the real estate industry, a local business owner, or if you know any individuals living in Las Vegas that have made a difference in our community, we want to share their accomplishments with you. Have them send us their bio and what they have done or are doing to improve the lives of our locals via email to homesweethome at vegastv.us and we'll invite them to our show for an interview. Yes, and when it comes to real estate, Melody and I can answer your questions. So if you or anyone you know needs our help or assistance in property management, buying or selling your home, we have the proven track record and the experience to help you. We've helped many of our viewers already, so call us now at 702-721-7474. This is Mark Bowman. 
And I'm Melody Mojica, providing you with local business information to keep your business alive and making your house a home sweet home. Don't go away, Lifestyle with Shannon Yang is up next. Hi, welcome to Lifestyle. Lifestyle with Shannon Yang. Today with me is Joe Lohan. He is a movie producer, director, and, pro and um, writer. And at young age, Joe already accomplished 70 short films, and he's working on his fourth full-length featured film. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell us what type of genres of movies do you like? Um, I mainly focus on horror. Uh, I've, Interesting. I've messed with comedy and drama, but it's mainly horror. I like to scare people. You like to scare people. That's <laughs> I what you like. I like to and you do them. what you like. That's yes, good. I do. <laughs> That's good. Um, I know that you have been noticed by some of the Hollywood directors. And tell us what directors are like. Um, I've been a part of Hellbenders, which is JT Petty. Um, I, I'm a part of his new film. It just was released maybe the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. And um, James Wan from Insidious also. Mm -hmm. I was second runner up in the Insidious Chapter 2 competition. I see. And, and I know just recently got an award as well, right? Yeah, we were just, um, I was just informed that I will be receiving an award for the 48 hour film project this Friday. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And you're very accomplished. <laughs> Tell us what does it take to be a movie producer, writer, director? Um, it's lots of sacrificing. Like what? I mean, you don't sleep. You don't sleep? <laughs> at all. Really? You give up sleep, yeah. I mean, maybe two days ago I was running on like two hours of sleep for three days. Wow. Yeah, I've been on set this past couple of days back to back, so. And I mean, how, how do you handle that? I don't know. I guess it's just a rush <laughs> of me, of my, my films coming to life that kind of just keeps me going. You have to have a passion for it. Yeah, I mean, I live and breathe film, so I guess majority of the time it's more just thinking of what's the next shot. What's you know, what can we make shot? different? That's what keeps me going. I see. And um, how can someone get started in the industry? Um, honestly, just keep creating. Keep creating. I've been doing this since I was 11 years old. And Do you need to work with any local agent? Um, no. I mean, at, at a certain point you can, but at this point, as long as you just keep on creating, I mean, you do something one weekend, release it, see what you did wrong, do it again the following just weekend, trying. just keep on making, keep on creating. I see. Are you working on any film right now? I know you're working on your... Tell us yeah, a little bit more I'm, about I'm it. working on my next full-length feature called The Telephobia. Um, what does Telephobia mean? Um, it's The Fear of Imperfection. And tell, it's interesting, <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit more about it. Um, I, the best way I could describe it is like, it's weird, it's like Miss Congeniality meets Mean Girls meets Saw. That it's, actually sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, it's about pageant girls and bullying and it's just very a torture film, it's really bloody. <laughs> it and, is. Um, like, tell us where we can find more information about it and when it's going to be, when it's going to be coming out. Um, we have an expected date to release October 13th of this year. Um, right now we're, in the, we're still in production. We've been in production for like three weeks. We probably have a couple more weeks to go. And then it comes the editing. So once that goes, then we'll have a solid release date for it. Do you, um, do you have like a website for people to go to to find out more information about your film and, and you, you, you know, yourself? Um, you can find me on any social media site. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You're everywhere. Yeah, and we'll be launching our new website at the end of this, like at the end of next month, we'll be launching the new website. I see. Um, it's also like Facebook, Twitter, is that also another way that you market yourself? Oh, I honestly wondering. think social media is one of the best ways to market yourself. If you have one word to tell to our audience, what would that be? Say that again? If you have one, not one word, but I guess one sentence that you want to tell our audience who's pursuing this business, what would that be? Um, keep creating. That's the only way you'll succeed. Just keep on creating and don't hold back. Yeah, and work with Joe, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Joe. Thank you for having me. This is Lifestyle with Shannon Yang. Don't go away with me. We'll be right back. Hello, 
this is Essence of Style, and this is David Tapaz. Today, I'm going to talk about music, not style. But there is also a sense of style in music. And with me is one of the most fabulous musicians here in Las Vegas, Josh Dismond. Hello, Josh. Hello. Welcome, and thank you for being here in my show. Thank you so, for having me. So, music has always been your passion? Absolutely. Always, since I was a very young kid. Um, my, uh, my father was a musician. He taught in the New York City school systems for music. And uh, my mother also liked music. And so I was always intrigued in music. Yeah, uh, do, do you think Las Vegas uh, has gone to a point where the music industry can uh, progress, just like we have in LA or any other parts of the country? Absolutely. There is more than enough talent in the city to sustain the same type of market as what's seen in LA and New York and Atlanta, um, especially in pop, hip hop and R&B and rock, you know, all the top 40 genres. Um, and what I'm looking to do in uh, establishing a brand out here uh, for myself and for the city is uh, creating a record label and publishing company, um, both of which will um, sustain artists locally found um, and bring them to heights they've never seen before in the world of music. And, and, and our talented musicians, are you talking about musicians as performing musicians or, uh, are, you know, vocals? Really, you have a wide variety of all of it. Um, there's talented musicians uh, when it comes to playing instruments, uh, piano, uh, guitar, bass, drums. Um, I'm working with some very talented drummers, um, such as Scotty Coogan, and I actually have a young prodigy drummer by the name of Brayden Fleischer that I'm working with as well, who is phenomenal. And it, it's so uh, amazing to me that you know you seem to be in a, an inspiration to a lot of younger uh, musicians and singers and performers. Um, getting kids out there the way that I wasn't able to when I was of their age and the interest in music, it's definitely a good focus to have younger kids involved in something that can be a good outlet for them um, into their creativity. Yeah, I, I would believe so, knowing that we have some of the greatest entertainment and shows here in Las Vegas, the, the musically inclined. I, I, I think it is just but right to have our own music industry here. Absolutely. And is there an association or an organization with regards to musicians locally? Yeah, well, one of them is the one that we're looking to create as far as um, the record label and publishing company. And uh, that's, again, Tree Life Records and Tree Life Publishing. And what they'll do, be able to do is help artists in uh, getting found, getting funded, getting their marketing done, uh, PR, things that go beyond when the music is captured and where to put it and things like that. Um, also uh, publishing as far as like getting placement in movies and reality shows and video games and things like that. Because um, this world nowadays, I mean, pretty much everything you hear needs music, you know, uh, fashion shows, um, anything that involves um, a good time or entertainment is always going to have some sort of mu musical background to it. And so I would love to be the one that helps in the creation of a real industry here in, in town for that. So for regards to a younger uh, person, like uh, you know, a teenager that has this uh, inborn talent in singing, for example, how does he or she go about it? Does she join your team or is there a venue or a program that the city has in order to help this kids? Um, places like Sanford, Sanford Brown, previously IADT Studios, or music schools that are out there locally that will help a student from uh, the point of just aspiring to actually learning the education behind music, um, even going out of state for getting their musical background and then bringing it back to, to the state um, to pursue their music careers. Um, but more or less, uh, the best way to get started is just to be creative and uh, think of you know, new innovative ways to put your music out there and to sing and to practice and explore your talent um, the best way possible. So you're trying to say that you build your own portfolio, Absolutely. sort of like on your own kind of thing. Absolutely. I have a portfolio of about 200 songs myself and that's something I would highly recommend is before going to anyone or pursuing music that much more on a professional level to have a good practice format of you know, just exploring your music and doing as much as you can. And that's also going to give a record label a lot of ammunition to try to market you and put you out on the market. I see. It's, it's a very interesting because I've heard some of your own composition as you played some of them here uh, 
here at the event center when we did Fashion Fridays and uh, you did portions of the show with your own composition. So where do you get your inspiration and how do you call your kind of music? Um, well, I would say my kind of music is pretty much every kind of music um, because I like to um, get my hands into everything. I have uh, a lot of hip hop creations, uh, R&B creations, um, pop, um, runway pop. Okay? So it just it has to cater to the event or what is you know the the target market for the music I'm I'm playing. So as far as this event, my inspiration would have been someone like a David Guetta or uh, Red One, uh, the one that produced uh, Lady Gaga, things mm -hmm. like that. So sounds that are really uplifting and really party going. Um, but then, you know, some of the people that previously inspired me when it comes to hip hop and R&B are um, like your Dr. Dre's and your Alchemist and your Swiss Beats, Timbaland um, for the um, hip hop and R&B scene. And um, yeah, there, there's just, there's so much talent out here and so much talent that's already been discovered and found that uh, definitely inspire me to be in, in the same, uh, same light as them. And uh, you know, like the BET Awards that was just on not too long yes. ago. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to all these other new compositions that you'll be coming out with. And thank you so much for visiting me at Essence of Style. Thank you very much. This is Essence of Style, and this is David Tupaz. Until next week. Good day everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Immigration Matters with Visha Calderon, only here on Home Sweet Home. This week, we will answer a question sent in by one of our viewers, Mike, regarding long absences from the United States while being a green card holder. The email reads, Hi Ms. Calderon, my name is Alex and I'm a permanent resident from South Africa. After I got my immigrant visa in 2005, I came to the United States and stayed here for a month. I went back to South Africa and stayed there for nine months and came back again to the United States for a month. Every year until 2013, I have been doing that, staying in my country for around 10 months and coming back to the United States only for a month to two at a time. The last time I came back to the United States, the immigration officer asked why I don't stay here in the United States. He said that I'm supposed to stay here more time. He also told me that he will take my green card if I do it again. Can he really take my green card even if I'm not outside the U.S. for more than one year at a time? Hello, Alex. Thank you for your question. I know that many permanent residents think that if they return to the United States within one year, that's okay for purposes of keeping their green card. But that's not necessarily true. By granting a permanent resident or green card status to an individual, the United States government expects permanent residents to actually reside in the United States and not anywhere else. If a person spends more time outside the United States than inside the U.S., then this seriously raises a question as to that person's intention, whether he still wants to reside here or not. Generally, if a person is absent from the U.S. for more than six months, but less than one year, then that creates a presumption that he wants to give up his permanent resident status. If the absence is more than one year, however, that could be considered as an abandonment. Here, although Alex's absence were less than 12 months each year, the pattern of conduct can be taken against him to support the presumption of his intention to give up his permanent resident status. Unfortunately, Alex, you're putting your green card or permanent resident status in jeopardy if you continue your practice. I suggest that you consult with a reputable immigration attorney to see if you can apply for a re-entry permit that will allow you to stay outside the United States for a maximum period of two years. Your attorney may be able to also help you gather any documentation you may need to justify the absences and your prolonged stays in your home country, and that such absences do not really mean that you intended to abandon your permanent resident status. Thank you for sending in your question, Alex, and I hope that I answered it to your satisfaction. To our dear viewers, if you have immigration questions, feel free to call us at 
or email us at homesweethome at vegaslifetv.us. I'll do my very best to answer them right here on Immigration Matters with Vesha Calderon. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same channel. Attorney Vesha Calderon at your service. from TC's world-famous barbecue rib crib. We are located at 3655 South Durango between Spring Mountain and Twain. I'm here to present the signature dish of the week, which is our world-famous barbecue beef rib. Yes, that's right, I said beef. We serve spare ribs, baby back ribs, as well as our crowd-pleasing beef ribs. Today, our meaty beef ribs are being served with our perfectly seasoned green beans and our homemade, hand-cut, candied yummy yams. And to set it off, we have our family recipe cornbread. Here at TC's, we can service all of your catering needs. For more information on catering or to make reservations, please call us at 702-451-RIBS. That's 702-451-7427. Come see us soon for some down-home barbecue at TC's Rib Crib. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Vegas Live TV's Home Sweet Home, taped right here at the Vegas Live TV Studio and Event Center. For up-to-date news on local events and latest episodes, visit our official webpage, VegasLiveTV.us, and like our page on Facebook. We'd like to thank our cast and crew. Special thanks to David Tupaz, Bill Bond, and Simply Farrellin. Thank you for making us look fantastic each and every episode. Yes, and if you want to promote your business or your professional service, we have very affordable package deals for locals which includes free commercial production. Call us now at 702-659-7877. And for your corporate events, local and business mixers, even for fashion shows and intimate concerts for 100 people or less, book our Vegas Live TV studio and event center at affordable rates. Call 702-659-7877. And we'll even include your event in our segments. Call us now at 702-659-7877 or email us at homesweethome at vegaslifetv.us. And on behalf of our Vegas Life TV, we wish to thank you for watching. Until next time, have a blessed week, everyone. See you Bye. next time. This has been a presentation of VATV.